Hey, welcome folks. I don't know what happened with that first link, but I apologize with that. Um, so yeah, so today is day five, right? Um, and first I want to say welcome to all you that are watching the replay. I do love you, enjoy you. Please leave some comments and share this if you find it helpful, especially if there's somebody that's struggling with this point today. And we're going to get really into some of the tactful things that we can do for that. Um, so today's day five, as I said, of 22 ways in order to automate your freelance business. And today we're going to start doing that building in, hey Chris, how's it going? We're going to start building in those leads into our business here. So before I do that, I just want to make sure, I, I see Chris is on, I just want to make sure that we're all good to go and share this out as well. Um, <clears throat> if you want to go ahead and share this out too, feel free. Uh, I'd appreciate that. And the more people that we have in here, the more engagement that we can have and uh, it'd be great. So, um, yeah, as I said, we, we started really defining at the beginning of the week really defining your business and your core values and who you serve and, and those kind of things. And yes, it's not really about automation, but you need that kind of solid foundation to stand on. Then we spoke about building out your, your lead magnets and your automation, right? Your email automation and nurturing those leads through your email platform. You know, we talked a lot about Drip and MailChimp and things like that in the other video. So I won't get too into that here but that leads me to today's topic right which is how to show your expertise and I know a lot of small businesses and freelancers you guys you guys don't do this right but it's so easy I know I didn't do it for a long time and I suffered for it I, that's pretty much the only regret I have and that's really writing blog posts right I would encourage you to have at least three blog posts on your site, right? And I'm going to give you the exact things to write about. So there's no real excuse here on not having at least three blog posts. And if you don't have these posts already, then go ahead. Here, I'm giving you some more ideas that you can write about. So I would encourage you to do that. If you know anybody that has struggled with content before, bring them in here. Let's, there should be no struggle at all. I'm not a writer. I'm not a content guy, so to speak. And I can come up with at least 20 different topics to talk about. And I'm gonna give you a few of those today. <clears throat> so um, I'd love to hear you know, we have a few people online live now, so I'd love to, you know, if you leave a comment and share where you're from and who you are, that, that'd be awesome. So I know Chris Marr is in here, so I'm happy to have him here. He, he is the content guru, right? So um, I'm sure he can probably jump in at any time and, and add to this conversation, which is fantastic. And of course, if you do like what I'm saying, please press that like button. I just want to get that positive feedback so I can even talk more about it. So here's the thing. You want to write at least five blog, at, at, you want to write at least three blog posts. And the reason why is because <clears throat> you want to give leads something to show that you know, you're, you know what you're talking about, that you are the expert and that they can come to you to be able to get answers to the questions that they have, right? And that's really all it is. You know, you wanna be able to have a, a blog or a, a repository of links, right? That you can share with potential leads, clients, even past clients, send them, let them know what you know right? And let them be able to answer questions that they may have about your service, which leads me into some of the topics that you can do, you can use for this, right? So for example, here's one, what questions do clients ask you, right? Have a blog post that lists three, five, even maybe 
if you're really ambitious, 10 questions. Anytime you, hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks for sharing that out. I do appreciate that. Um, whatever questions that you get asked during your sales meetings or kickoff calls, whatever that might be, take note of that. Chances are those questions get asked of you time and time again. Why, why don't you just why don't you just allow your your blog to answer those questions, right? Because that's what your clients are going to search for. They're going to search on Google how to do X or why do I need Y, right? They're going to ask these questions. Give Google the answers, right? Which Google will then present those answers to your leads. So that's the first topic. Next topic is a case study, right? If you've done one project, you can write about it. Maybe not necessarily, you know, change the names for, you know, privacy purposes or whatever, but you can definitely write about what it is that you did for them, what the problem is that they had coming to you, and then the solution that you provided to them. Then here's something that a lot of people don't write about is what your service may be wrong for someone, right? why your service may be wrong for someone because there are projects that you're not enthusiastic about right and why are why aren't you enthusiastic about it well maybe it's just not your fit right i'm a developer i'm not a designer uh, i'm definitely more of a back-end guy than a front-end guy so when somebody comes to me for theme development yes i can do it it's not really my thing so maybe i can write a blog post about why i don't do front-end development the other, the flip side of that coin is why your service is right for someone. You know, you can list down all of the benefits that somebody gets from hiring you, right? So <clears throat> this is, like I said, this is the flip side of that other coin where now this is something that somebody is going to look at on your blog and say, oh, you know what? I do have these problems. I fit into what this person does. Maybe he can solve my problems for me as well. <clears throat> and finally, here's another topic is compare your service to a real life brand, a brand that knows that, you know, is well known, right? So for example, for me, yes, I've picked on other e-commerce stores, famous brands online, right? And yeah, it's you're kind of treading waters here and stuff like that. And the worst that really they can do is come back and say, <clears throat> hey, Jason, we don't like that. Can you take that off? And I'll take it off, right? But <clears throat> here's the thing, right? You're giving tips on why you would do certain things that these big brands should know about, but they don't, right? So just here, th those are some basic five topics that you can write about, right? So if, um, please, Volva, Tanya, hey, welcome. Um, if you like what you what I'm talking about here, please feel free to press that like button or hearts or emojis or any of that kind of stuff or share this out. Um, I greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> also, if you have any questions, please jump in. Um, the second point that I wanted to make was you can use a tool like BuzzSumo, right? And find out what po popular articles and topics that people are writing about inside of your own niche, right? So if you have a specific kind of service or specific kind of client, drop that into buzzsumo.com and it'll, it'll give you search results of the most shared articles that are targeted for that topic, right? So now you know what's popular, what people are searching for, what, excuse me, what people are sharing. So it might spark some ideas for more blog posts. And lastly, <clears throat> and this is where the smarts come in, right? Your blog should be your, a part of your sales process, right? When somebody's reading a blog post, any blog post, it could be the questions, it could be, you know, a case study, whatever it might be give them an action to take at the end, right? Think about what it is that you want the reader to do next, right? 
whether that's either sign up for something for you, maybe become a lead, get their email address, or maybe it's just leaving something in the comment sections, right? Or maybe it's sharing something, right? Whatever that action is, make it known at the end of that blog post that you want the reader to take so that this way there's that next step. It's not just some piece of entertainment that the reader is doing, right? They, they came to you with a question. You provided the answer to that question. They're probably going to have more questions. So grab them, right? Ask, give them something of benefit with, through a content upgrade in exchange for their email address or leave a comment below, whatever it might be, right? So, make that call to action at the very end of every blog post, even intermixed in the blog post as well. You can be tactful about it, but make it relevant to what the blog post is. If you're talking about sports the whole time on the blog post, the last thing you want to do is at the end say, Hey, we you know, get this free iPad or whatever it might be, right? It's totally irrelevant. Make the call to action relevant to the post. So, in order for you to show that you're an expert, you need to be writing blog posts. And I would encourage you to take three blog posts and write about some simple topics. It could be questions that you get all the time, a case study, maybe why or why not your service is good for somebody. Even compare your service to a real life brand. Make it a case study. Second, use a tool like BuzzSumo. Find out what other people are sharing about based around a topic that you know, right? And third, always have a call to action at the end related to the blog post at hand, right? I don't know if you guys are hearing that. My cat's being extremely annoying, so I apologize for that. And so that's, that's really it. That's all you need to do is just, I would encourage you to at least write three blog posts so that your leads start coming in, right? Your leads start coming in and getting onto your email list. So again, I would love for you to join the Sustainable Freelancer Facebook group. It's free. Just go to res.com slash Facebook and jump in there and share a link to your posts. I'd love to read it. There's always a, th there's a thread on Thursdays where we promote our own stuff. So definitely go in there and jump in there and uh, I'd love to check it out. And that's it. We'll, we'll talk tomorrow um, and it's your time to feast.